Alex, Kevin, congratulations. You guys are in the third and final round of this competition, which means that you're both one step closer to the title of Forge Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. All you need to do now is go home and recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Spada. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Good luck, Kevin. So it's day one in Belleville, West Virginia. I got a spot to go make. Let's get crack a lacking. Woo! I'm going to be using 5160. It's a forgiving medium. It'll bring some strength to whatever they're going to smash, cut, break, kill. So I'm going to try Big Sexy first to bash down the width of that material to about two and a half, two and a quarter inches wide. Come on, dang it. It worked. Four days is it enough time to make a spatha. You don't know what the complication is going to be. Oh, she's getting there, though. I slowly started drawing it out. I'm about 35 inches long. You know, it's just patience, getting the equipment to work right. Tomorrow, pressure will be on, because uh, I ain't got to get this thing quenched. If I don't, I'm behind the ball. Woo! Definitely excited to be back home, back in my shop where I'm nice and comfortable. I'm going to do a uh, full Damascus blade with a little bit of a ladder pattern in it. I'm really looking forward to going all out and making something really cool to impress the judges. First press was just nice and quick and light, just to push everything together. And this next press will be a little more aggressive, probably the most important part of this entire build. My weld seemed to have stuck pretty well. I'm going to start drawing this thing out. One seam that came apart. I think if I just flux it, get it hot, and press it again, should be OK. Let's hope. This might be a make or break moment right here. I really hope that's the only one. But deep down, I'm petrified that there's going to be more of these seams opening up throughout this billet. As I go to start drawing this billet out, a big seam just opens up right in the center of my billet. So I think my best bet it's going to be to break the spillet in half, salvage as much welded steel as I possibly can. And I'll just do a generic random pattern Damascus, but it'll still be a Damascus sword. Well, the good news is both of those seem really solid, so we least got something out of today. Today, I need to get the blade done and quenched. So I got the shoulders put in. I have the medial ridge where you can distinctly see where it's starting to come together. It's time for the quench. Oh, f yeah, look at that, man. We're quenching again because I don't have time to f around with a normalization because I went all the way down to the bottom and I felt it bend. I got to go through all the steps all over again. Still got that bend. I'm going to temper overnight. And in that process, it'll start to hopefully normalize down. It's hit or miss. It's either going to go well <laughs> or it's going to go wrong. And, and yeah, it, it went wrong today. It's morning of day two. Definitely had some setbacks yesterday. Starting the day with my build tacked up and ready for forge welding, and hoping to end the day with a quenched and hardened spatha. First press. Looks OK so far, but I'm still going to be really careful. I've got my billet drawn out pretty close to shape. I have just enough length here. Uh, and you can see I'm kind of forging in that medial ridge already. This is the longest blade I have ever attempted to quench. I pull the blade out of the oil. At the end of the day, I have an intact Damascus blade. So first thing tomorrow, I'm going to get my blade etched and the handle prepared. And Looking forward to a good day. I'm feeling better than last night because uh, I got the blade tempered and got it straight. Still behind the ball. I'm going to start to fit up the handle, start looking at different parts and what I think looks well. 
So my design plan for this pommel is I'm going to take the two ends of the deer antler and I'm going to carve a lion's head out of them. Hand carving anything is time consuming, so I can't get lost in my head. I'll set it in on top of glow-in-the-dark resin, and then I'll fill that in with a clear epoxy. I'm not walking in there with something plain. Tomorrow, I'm going to put some bronze metal stain on the blade, and I'm going to finish this no matter what. It'll be done. We started day four. The fatigue of the past couple of days is definitely starting to set in. The blade's been etching in the coffee overnight to really bring out the contrast. Yeah, it really darkened up that 1084. So this spot then needs to have a wooden guard and a disc-shaped pommel. So I'm going to do a stacked handle. I'm using ironwood for the guard and the pommel because it's super strong. And then I'm going to use black wood for the main part of the handle. I've got all my individual pieces of this handle fitted up nice and tight. I've got to get this blade sharpened. And I've never sharpened anything this long before, but I know how to put an edge on a knife. I cannot wait to see this thing put to the test. Word. All right, bladesmiths, your Spatha swords look amazing. It's time to find out what kind of lethal damage they can do. To do that, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes and blows on this more than willing ballistics dummy. Alex, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, Alex, first up, I can really appreciate the beauty that you have with your Damascus pattern right there. It really stands out. Very clean lines. The medial ridge you have on here, I can imagine well, how much work that takes to get it almost perfectly straight all the way through to the tip. Your tip is sharp enough to penetrate with the thrust and lacerate on the way out. And most importantly, it will kill. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. All right, Kevin, it's your turn, so you ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Alex's uh, Spatha just destroyed that uh, blow sticks dummy. And now I'm feeling anxious, excited. So I got the adrenaline going. Doesn't have a ridge, does it? Very tip. No medial ridge on either side of the blade. It's one of the parameters. Right. Kevin, your blade must fall within our parameters in order to be tested evenly and fairly with your competitors. Your blade does not have a central ridge that was a parameter that was outlined before we ever sent you home. And for that reason, you cannot be the Forged and Fire champion. Come on, my friend. You know, it's just a bummer I can't see it tested. That's what I really want to see. I want to see how it holds up. Nice work on that handle. Buddy. Thank you, I appreciate it. When I was making it, it, it had the defined ridge in it. Just with the sanding and grinding, it just took more of it off. But uh, this whole experience has been a blast. Congratulations. This isn't a loss. I'm coming home with a $10,000 experience. Alex, you made a sharp and deadly spatha. But not only that, you made something that is detailed and beautiful. And your attention to detail has elevated you to the title of Forged and Fire Champion. Congratulations. Your title comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. This is pretty wild. I came here to challenge myself and put myself through a super rigorous test. And I came out on top, and it feels great. This $10,000, I'm actually going to give it all straight to my parents. They supported me through college as I was learning bladesmithing, and they're both getting ready to retire, so uh, this is all going to them. 